coming. Uh, Ernie, I'm going to pick up where you left off. A real special friend of mine, a special Vermonter by the name of George Chandler, the founder of Hubberton Forge in Castleton, Vermont, has 225 Vermonters working for him. They make quality lighting products that go all over the world. George turn, churn, uh, Chandler turned to me uh, several years ago and he said, Brian, you can't be pro-employee if you're anti-employer. We're in this thing together. Uh, we can grow jobs working together using the wisdom of George. We need to rise above politics and partisanship. We need to unite around the idea of growing jobs. We can, in working together, what we can, we can grow opportunity in our state. We in government also need to be grounded in the reality that we can only spend a percentage of what you all make, what the small businesses of the state of Vermont generate. That's uh, basic economics. We in government also need to understand that only with a strong economy and good paying jobs can we pay for the services that we value. A great education for the next generation, our children. Great schools, a clean environment, well-maintained roads and bridges and rails and airports, safe neighborhoods, support for our seniors and the most vulnerable. All Vermonters agree with me when I say the best social program is a good job. The workers, the workers in this facility and the workers of Vermont are world class. I know that. When I talk to the plant manager of General Electric in Rutland, Vermont, and I hear the stories and the accolades for the educated, motivated, flexible workforce of the Vermont workforce. But we need to give the Vermont workers the tools they need to compete. Reasonable levels of taxation, reasonable regulations, world-class wireless and broadband infrastructure, a great education and workforce training opportunities. That's what my 10-point economic development plan is all about. I call it Pure Vermont, a blueprint for job growth and economic expansion. We've crafted it from input from you, business owners, from you, managers, from you, employees, and George Klein, from you and your members, members of the IBEW. I've asked what works, what doesn't work, what helps, what hurts. I've listened to your answers and learned from your inputs. Pure, Vit, Pure Vermont is my vision drawn from your wisdom. I've got gathered it from listening to thousands of Vermonters all over this great state. And here it is, point number one. We need to keep state spending at affordable levels. In the past two years, our economy has suffered. Incomes have dropped and everyone has tightened their belt. State spending has gone up in the last two years 7%. Human services spending has gone up 20%. Obviously, that's not sustainable. I propose that we limit the growth of state spending, limit the growth of state spending to no more than 2% a year, effectively the same rate as our family budgets grow. State spending cannot grow more than the underlying economy without bankrupting our state and our families. By imposing disciplined state spending, we can work to cut taxes over time. Working families and businesses will be able to keep more of what they earn. Uh, the basis of this plan are really presented in this chart. This is a consensus forecast. The red line here is the consensus forecast developed by uh, our legislature and the Joint Fiscal Office and our administration. If we do nothing, this is the consensus forecast of our revenues. What I'm proposing we do is we impose a 2% discipline spending plan for our state, which is greater than the rate of anticipated inflation which will allow us to fund, to make sure that our social safety net is funded. And would, the differential of that would allow $240 million of tax cuts to be given back to Vermonters, and Vermonters to allow $240 million to stay in their pockets, thereby making Vermont competitive and more stronger, consistent with Greg Donahue's observations of what he experienced in his job. Um, it's important for people to remember, in a historical context, Governor Howard Dean in the 90s did something more difficult than what I'm proposing. He imposed three years of level-funded budgets. Three years of level-funded budgets. What I'm proposing is that we grow budget, our budget 
at 2%, which is greater than the anticipated rate of inflation, and allow us to be able to generate tax savings for hardworking Vermonters. That's, uh, I think it's reasonable, I think it's fair. Governor Dean did it, I'm proposing it going forward as a state. Economists expect our tax revenues to increase slowly over the next five years. And as we recover from the recession by limiting our state spending to 2%, as I said, we can generate $240 million that would allow Vermonters to keep those dollars in their pocket. Some might ask, what happens if the recession continues? Great question. All the more reason that we impose a spending discipline, which would allow flexibility for us to make decisions, the General Assembly and administration to make reasonable decisions. Um, it's reasonable. Number two, cut taxes. I propose we cut income tax rates, income tax brackets for all Vermonters in all brackets. We also must address our skyrocketing property taxes. Vermonters pay the highest property taxes in the country. High property taxes are costing us jobs and driving families and employers out of our state. Working together, we need to face our school spending challenges. No one believes in, public, in our public schools and public education more than I do. I'm the product of our public schools. I'm married to a public school teacher. My wife, Penny, was a public school teacher. Our four children are graduates of our public schools. And they received a great education from talented and de dedicated teachers. I chaired my hometown school board for five years. I served for six years. I was a chairman when we, uh, when our state passed Act 60. And with that said, let's look at the numbers. Over the past decade, when our students have dropped by 12%, our school spending, education spending, has gone up by 70%. I'm proposing a common sense cap on per pupil spending and on property taxes. The voters in Massachusetts passed the cap 30 years ago, and even the Democratic candidate for the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo, uh, for the governor in the state of New York, is proposing a 2% cap. 